Pacifica Radio. I'm Christina Onestead. More than 150 international organizations have signed on to a letter urging the Biden administration to close Guantanamo Bay, marking the 21st anniversary of the detention center Wednesday. Peace and human rights groups, including Code Pink, staged an action on the UC Berkeley campus in California yesterday, calling for Guantanamo Bay's closure and for the prosecution of the campus law professor, Republican John Yu, who was a high-ranking Justice Department official when he authored the so-called torture memos during the George W. Bush administration. The memorandums argued the prisoners at Guantanamo should not be covered by the Geneva Convention's prohibition against mistreatment and torture. According to Human Rights Watch, the U.S. tortured at least 39 detainees at Guantanamo. Some of them were waterboarded. Russia says its forces are edging closer to capturing a salt mining town of Solidar in eastern Ukraine. Much of the town has been reduced to rubble as Ukraine tries to fend off Russian attacks. Ukraine's deputy defense minister, Hanna Malgar, says they continue defending the land and the Russians have marched on the bodies of their own soldiers, burning everything on their way. Her comments were translated by Al Jazeera. Fighting is fierce in the Solidar direction near Bakhmut. Despite the difficult situation, Ukrainian soldiers are desperately fighting. Russia is trying to break through our defence lines without any luck, to capture Solidar, and the enemy has high losses. The area outside the city is covered with the bodies of Putin's troops. The Russians are moving over their own corpses. The private mercenary Wagner Group is largely behind Russian gains made in Solidar. In the U.S., just days into the new legislative session, Republicans who now control the House chamber are going after abortion rights. They took early action with their majority approving two measures Wednesday. One to condemn attacks on anti-abortion facilities, including crisis pregnancy centers, and a separate bill to impose new penalties if a doctor refuses to care for an infant born alive after an attempted abortion. The moves make it clear they want further restraints after the Supreme Court overruled the federal right to abortion last year. New York Republican Claudia Tenney said the resolution was needed after an anti-abortion pregnancy center was firebombed in New York last year called Compass Care. The perpetrators left graffiti. Jane was here. These, those responsible have still not been held accountable. Unfortunately, this was not an isolated incident. Over 100 pro-life facilities and churches were attacked in 2022 alone. More than twice that number of abortion clinics were attacked, according to the National Abortion Federation, which releases a tally each year. It's yet to release last year's, but in 2021, the NAF documented more than 800 acts of violence, including death threats, battery, vandalism, invasions, and burglary against abortion providers and clinics. It also documented more than 2,000 instances of trespassing, more than 55,000 incidents of hate mail and internet harassment and more than 200,000 pickets outside abortion clinics. Democrat Mary Gay Scanlon of Pennsylvania slammed the resolution as political posturing to anti-abortion extremists. By condemning only vandalism and violence against anti-abortion facilities, it gives tacit approval to the far more frequent attacks against abortion clinics and other medical centers disfavored by the radical right. Political violence is never the answer. Meanwhile, CVS and Walgreens have announced they will sell the abortion medication at pharmacies known as Mifepristone. That comes after the FDA announced it is allowing the drug to be bought over the counter with a prescription. Alabama's attorney general said medication abortions will remain illegal in the state despite the Biden administration's move to expand access to those drugs. President Joe Biden's legal team has discovered another set of documents with classified markings. This comes days after attorneys for the president said they located a small number of classified documents at the president's former office space in Washington. Republicans have compared the news to former President Donald Trump's handling of classified documents, though Biden has said the documents were handed over to the National Archives. Yet Trump refused to do that. Also, Trump had stored hundreds of documents at his home in Mar-a-Lago, which led to an FBI raid of the home. Biden had 12 documents at an old office. The number and location of the second batch of documents have not been reported. I'm Christina Onestead, reporting for Pacifica Radio.